Arsenal FC, domestically one of the best clubs to ever play in the Premier League in the 21st century, but in recent years the club has underperformed by its old standards. But I bring good news to Arsenal fans and I say there could be a huge Premier League title waiting for them at the end of the season. Let me explain. First, let's look at how Arsenal even got to this point in the first place. It wasn't until the 2015-16 season when Arsenal started their initial decline. For the 10 years before that point, Arsenal had built themselves up and had their iconic invincible season and become a Premier League giant. And how do you improve on invincibility? Well, uh, I think to improve is an attitude you have or you don't have, and these players want always to get better. But after that, it was the beginning of the end for Arsene Wenger, at least. When Arsenal first purchased the Emirates Stadium in 2004, it cost them so much money they had to go into debt, which resulted in them selling off players, cutting wage bills, and even selling bonds to fans. This had obvious stress on the team, because they couldn't invest money into the squad like they used to, and the club mostly focused on the paying off their debts. As the years went by, their strongest players started to leave the club, and their replacements had a hard time filling their shoes. Back to 2016, Arsenal placed in 5th, then 6th in the following season, and Arsene Wenger would get sacked. Do you know how bad it is? Last night I chatted to my mum, yeah? My mum's wenger in. Is she mad? Is she mad? The next man that was brought in was Unai Emery. To keep it short, he brought bad results. And there was no real sign of the team doing any better under him. So he was sacked after only one season. Worst manager ever. And Emery was poor at Arsenal without a doubt. Were just some of the things said by fans. But one supporter in particular had an incredible idea. I'm not an Arsenal fan, but I think Arteta would be a perfect fit. Mikel, you're back and you're back as the head coach. How special is this moment for you? I'm extremely happy and excited and proud um, to come back home. Arteta joined the club for the 2019-20 season, and I have to admit his start was a little bit slow. For two seasons in a row, Arsenal could only muster an 8th place finish. The team had had an obvious decline and were in their worst shape in over 20 years. But instead of sacking Arteta like a lot of the fans at the time were expecting... Sack this manager tonight! This is it. These three games would tell... Well, it's going to tell me everything I know about Mikel. Fuck off! What do we do? What do we need? What is the answer? What the answer is to sack Mikel Arteta. The club owners decided to give Arteta a chance and stand by him, and give him the time to build the team up himself. After a few strategic signings and tactical adjustments later, Arsenal were back on top of their game, placing 5th in the 21-22 season into title challengers for two seasons in a row. That was something really incredible. The team was finally back into form in the 2023-24 season, and making another insane run for the title. Proud of the boys, they did what they could. Lessons will be learned like we have done for the past few seasons. Always gives me goosebumps. We've come a long way shows how far the team has come under Arteta. Ahead of the 2024-25 season, Arteta's squad was in need of some reinforcements. The recruitment was the same as it has always been. What I mean by that is that these transfers don't look like very good ones because the players are either unproven or out of form. However, there's always the potential for a ton of upside on these players. Chelsea are facilitating Arsenal winning the league, aren't we? Because you can see Raheem Sterling having a huge pivotal moment in Arsenal's title quest. For example, they brought in Raheem Sterling on loan. In his past seasons at Chelsea has been for the most part pretty underwhelming, but they're signing a player with a vast amount of Premier League experience. His best seasons were when he was at City under Pep Guardiola. Why is that relevant? Well, even though Arteta and Guardiola are different managers, tactically speaking, Sterling and Arteta have that connection at City. And the last time he was coached by Arteta, he scored 53 goals across all competitions. So there is the possibility that he will be able to get back to his form from the 2019-20 season where he scored 31 goals. There is always a little bit of competition on the left-hand side, but I strongly believe if he'll get his time on the wing. Their other sign that caught my eye was Mikel Marino. He wasn't widely known to the football world until his Euro 2024 campaign, where he would have one of his best performances yet, scoring an important goal for Spain, and helping them win the Euros, which eventually caught the eye of the Arsenal scouts. As a player, he is unbelievably intelligent, and he's really good at distributing the ball and making decisions. I like Marino a lot. Fans just lack the vision. This is exactly who we need. People are sleeping on Marino's passing. This guy can play. The last super impactful signing that Arsenal have made has to be Ricardo Calafiori. 45 million euros, the young Italian was another player who was pretty good in the last club season, but really took the limelight during the Euros. He's a powerful player who takes advantage of his long strides in covering the pitch, but is also elegant and technically gifted for a center back. He's strong in the air and in one-on-one -on -one situations, and in possession he can also turn into an added midfielder, which helps Arsenal in advancing a few meters up the pitch and helping build up the game. In other words, he's a well-rounded and talented left-footed center back, which is what Arsenal really need. Uh, as I said, there were other clubs, but now I don't care anymore. I'm here and I want to improve to win trophies. As I said, it's the best project for me. And that brings us to the 2024-25 season. Before the season kicked off, a lot of Arsenal and not Arsenal fans had their predictions about where they'll land in the Premier League this season. No particular order. What's no, your no. four? Arsenal, City, Man United and Chelsea. I, I, I think... But out of pure predictions, I, I want to see a world where Arsenal wins the league or really anyone else, just out of pure competitive nature of the Premier League. World-class squad, world-class manager, could win the league easily. 
but I am giving it Arsenal. Well, their opening match against Wolves went as you would expect. They dominated the match and scored two goals. Havertz and Saka, they made it look easy, and it was a good start for the Gunners and an important three points to take home. Moving on, they had to play Villa next, and this was going to be a close match. And for the most part, it was. It was pretty back and forth until midway through the second half, and Arsenal would score two goals and come out on top. The Arsenal team had capitalized on their momentum from last season and were looking like they might actually push for the title. They would end up drawing Brighton in the next match and beating Tottenham in the North London Derby. But fast forward to when they had to play Manchester City, things really changed for them. I won't go too deep into the specifics, but if you have been on the internet lately, you probably know this match was very entertaining. Tons of banter and controversy. The referee was pretty questionable. Holland throwing the ball at Gabriel. Pep Guardiola assaulting this chair. There was a lot going on. But in the midst of all the chaos, I want to make note of what happened in the middle of the first half. Rodri was making a run across the goal, and I guess he bumped into Thomas Partey. It doesn't really matter. He tore his ACL in the end. And he won't be playing football for the rest of the season. This not only narrows down Manchester City's title hopes, considering the other injuries in their team, but it helps Arsenal's chances that much more. The latest match of the Premier League was against Leicester, and safe to say they dominated. I'm so happy. That's what I told him, you know. It got nasty, it got difficult, it was emotional and difficult to accept with the amount of situations we created and the amount of goals that we should have scored. Everybody, I brought it in or Gabi. But the question in your mind by now must be, what makes them better than the other teams running for the title? Well, first of all, let's look at their tactical setup. Mikel Arteta's Arsenal is a team that is always changing. This was the manager's promise when he took over, and in many ways, this is his greatest triumph. The overall impression is that Arsenal is more ruthless this season. The team can switch from a 4-3-3 formation to a 4-2-3-1. The confidence of the starting players is up. Up, and the impact of the subs is also really great. That's actually one of their biggest advantages, that a lot of their goals can stem from these impact subs as well. In a nutshell, Arsenal play a quick, possession-based football that prioritizes individual skill and creativity over grit and determination. But this is not to say that Arsenal's players aren't hardworking. The manager likes his players to win the ball seconds after losing it. In the 2023-24 season, Arsenal won possession back in 8.7 seconds on average after losing it. That's pretty insane. Since last season, though, Arteta has implemented a few defensive tweaks, which means Zinchenko often moves into the midfield during possession, allowing Arsenal to press high with seven players. The central defenders, including new addition Calafiori, are strong in aerial duels, which is actually where a large percentage of their goals come from. Mick Bill Moreno's arrival adds depth, freeing Declan Rice to play more offensively, and the squad has plenty of young, capable players ready to step up. On the other side of the ball, Bukayo Saka has become more crucial to the direct play this season, supporting Kai Havertz and Gabriel Marcinelli. Havertz, who plays more like an attacking midfielder, or even a false nine, has become one of Arsenal's key players. That's without mentioning the fact that they have Raheem Sterling as well. Their set-piece game was also some of the best in the league, like I mentioned, with them scoring 20 goals from some sort of spot kick last season. Obviously, we have no way of predicting the future, but when it comes to these new signings and their past performances, I think that third time's the charm. And with Man City becoming a weaker team under fitness issues, the Gunners might have a real chance of bringing on the Premier League title this season. But that's all I got today, so thanks for watching and I'll see you next week.